available for that informative session. Next, we have a one hour talk on synchronized non invasive ventilation of newborn by Professor Corrado Moretti. We have Professor Pradeep Rabetta, Professor of Pediatrics at VM VMMC and Tafdarjan Hospital, Delhi. He is also President elect 2023 NNF Delhi. We welcome you, sir, and kindly request you to introduce the speaker. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, Professor Corrado Moretti, no, uh, he doesn't need any introduction regarding uh, his, if you see his work in synchronized non-invasive ventilation, he's the pioneer actually. And basically our, uh, from his idea, we have now from non-invasive, from CPAP to NIPPB and now synchronized NIPPB. There's many papers to his credit. Uh, and uh, those are basically the fundamental research of synchronized non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. So without much do, let us hear from Professor himself. Good morning. Good morning to all of you. So do you listen to me? Yeah, you are audible. And this is uh, the slides. Can you see the full page? Can you see the full page? No. No. We're not able to see your slides. Ah, yes. Yes, now we can see. Just one second. Now you, saw, you, you can see full page. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and so thank you very much for uh, your very kind uh, presentation and also to, to thank uh, all the organizers of this uh, wonderful meeting for in my, inviting me. And uh, I will, above all, I want uh, to thank uh, Dr. Kumar and uh, Dr. Professor Man Manoj to, for inviting me to speak on synchronized non-invasive ventilation. I, I start with uh, <clears throat> a little piece of history. Uh, this is, uh, I think, uh, the first probably uh, paper on uh, intermittent positive pressure ventilation by nasal prongs. This paper, uh, this is this is, was my first paper and that was uh, published more than 40 years ago. And uh, as you can see in the left, uh, um, the, the, also the time we are looking for synchronization, but uh, because you can see that uh, this is the pressure of the ventilator and this is the thoracic impedance, but uh, we, we did uh, we used to do it manually, so trying to set the same parameters uh, of the baby on the ventilator, so the respiratory time and the rate. And at the time, we're using uh, these uh, homemade nasal prongs that uh, uh, are not so dissimilar from the, 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 the prongs that uh, we used to lay. Clearly, uh, the, the treatment was above all for apnea prematurity because uh, as you can understand at that time it was impossible to treat severe RDS due to the fact that we were in pressure factor anterior. So it took a long time in the truth to see a widespread adoption of this technique. But luckily in the last year, this technique non-invasive ventilation is increasing and increasing as it was demonstrated by this retrospective study whose goal was to evaluate the change in primary respiratory support in, a new, in uh, United States infants. As you can see in this period, the period considered of 10 years from 2008 to 2018, there was a, a remarkable and significant increase of the use of non-invasive ventilation. And at the same time, there was a decrease in use of mechanical ventilation. This is the high flow nasal cannula, more or less is the same, a little bit of reduction of its use. So, and uh, the, the authors also reported that, that thanks to non-invasive ventilation, about 30,000 fewer newborns were ventilated than expected when compared with the 2008 data. Clearly, these changes represent a very significant improvements in the natural respiratory care. 
I uh, remind you that there is a, a direct relationship uh, uh, between the duration of mechanical ventilation and the neurodevelopment of, of preterm infants. This is a beautiful paper, recent paper, in which were enrolled more than 300 babies uh, studying the relationship between the NDI and mechanical ventilation. And the conclusion was that there is a strong association, but this is a very impressive phrase that every additional day of mechanical ventilation is strongly associated with an increased risk of NDI. And moreover, also, a failed extubation has a great risk of complication of an, improve, of an increased uh, mortality and morbidity. This is another beautiful paper in which were enrolled uh, more than 100 babies. And the, the authors report that the infant who failed extubation had a, a, a significant increase of severe complication and not only that, but also BPD, intracranial hemorrhage, and so on, length of, stay, length of stay, and so on. So clearly, also to fail an extubation, it has a very high price. For this reason, limiting invasive mechanical ventilation is an important goal in the treatment of prepared infants. But so now the question is, uh, what are the most effective non-invasive ventilation techniques? The answer is given by this beautiful network meta-analysis developed by a colleague from India, the name Vaira, but it's very difficult for me to, to, to say the complete name. So this is a very beautiful analysis whose objective was to compare the efficacy of different NIV models primary respiratory support. The modes included were uh, Flunosercamula, Nasazipap, BiPAP, and uh, NAPPV, but not the synchronized mode. Uh, as you can see, many of the mass trial 35 were um, considered with more than 4,000 uh, infants uh, enrolled. The, the, the main outcome was the requirement of mechanical ventilation within the first seven days. So results, NAPPV is the most effective modality to prevent mechanical ventilation respiratory failure and uh, also the mode with the lowest incidence of uh, BPD and death. Also very interesting is the second uh, net network meta-analysis by the same author. In, in this time, uh, the, the objective was to compare the efficacy of different NAV modes as post-exhibition support. In this case, this is very interesting because uh, more or less uh, all the non-invasive ventilation techniques were considered. I flow nasal cannula, continuous flow variable flow nasal CPAP, BiPAP, synchronized and not synchronized ventilation, and also nasal high frequency oscillatory ventilation. Again, a, lot, a large number of uh, randomized trials, a large number of infants considered. And uh, the main outcome in this case was the required ventilation within a week. The results are, are that uh, synchronized nasal ventilation is the most effective mode for preventing extubation failure. And this, this technique is also associated with a decreased incidence of BPD. So we can really say that uh, NAPPV and above all, if synchronized, are among the most effective NAV techniques. And uh, by all these trials do not, do not appear to be associated with uh, an increased risk of side effects. But, uh, um, sorry, but uh, when using this technique, uh, we must consider a very important uh, factor that uh, the, the upper highways. We have to uh, remember that there is not uh, a direct connection between the ventilator and the lower harvest, that is the tracker too. And, uh, and um, moreover, you have to remind that uh, the upper highways perform functions that uh, um, which they must, for, for which they must open and close, uh, are all vital function as breathing, <laughs> swallowing, speaking, crying, and protection from inhalation. So, for this reason, clearly, this uh, the, 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 the upper way airways have no structural uh, rigidity, but are made up of muscles connected to rigid supports. The rigid support uh, are at the top, the base of the school. Uh, at the front, the, the jaw, at the bottom, the laryngeal cartilages. So, 
clearly, we know that uh, when uh, another very important problem is that uh, how the patency of upper airway is controlled during inspiration. Because when uh, the diaphragm contracts, uh, we know that there is an increase of the intralumial negative pressure with a tendency of the upper airway to collapse. But uh, th this collapse is prevented by three simultaneous events. First of all, the opening of the glostic to reduce the resistance. As you can see, this is the, a, a, a picture of uh, is the top inspiration and uh, there is a, a widening of vocal cords. And by contrast, during the expiration, there is the closure that is grunting, as you know. Moreover, the negative pressure stimulates uh, intraluminal uh, pressure receptor, and uh, it, this determines, determines the, 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 the reflex activation of the upper airway abductor muscle in order to stiffen and widen the pharynx. And uh, I remind you that the main, uh, um, the main uh, upper area of the third muscles are the genioglossus and genioioid. Well, these muscles uh, are linked between the ioid bone and the jaw, and their contraction determines a forward displacement of ioid bone. You have to consider that the ioid bone more or less in this position, and the forward displacement uh, uh, determines uh, a, a widening of the pharynx. So we have to take in mind all this uh, physiological details in non-invasive ventilation. And now let's go on uh, analyzing the interaction of uh, not synchronized ventilation with spontaneous breathing. This is a, a, a picture taken by a baby assisted with uh, not synchronized ventilation with a backup rate of 20 breaths minute. And uh, you can see that uh, most of the mechanical breaths are not synchronized with the infant. Here, the ventilator started the peak of spontaneous breath, here, the mid expiration, here, in the late expiration, and so on. I remind you that uh, the, the, the rate of asynchrony is very high. This is was demonstrated in several papers. This is one of the last one. It's a, a well done, a very well done paper in which uh, the, 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 the respiratory activity was measured, that was um, recorded by the electromyogram. And uh, in, in this study, were, were enrolled uh, very low, 21 very low breathed infants with a very low gestational age. And these authors reported that the rate of asynchronous was about 70%, so extremely high. You have to think that uh, when uh, you set, uh, the, you set the ventilator on 40 or 60 breaths minutes uh, as uh, this, the author of this paper did. This means about 60,000, 80,000 cycles every day and 70% of them are asynchronous. I suppose that uh, this is very upsetting for the baby. Moreover, there are, uh, as you can see, ventilation is not improved by asynchronous mechanical breaths. This is, this is a very old paper by our group. Uh, this is uh, a, a recorded of uh, the first attempt trials of uh, um, flow synchronized ventilation. Here we have the pressure of the ventilator. Here the esophageal pressure that, as you know, is the same as uh, uh, of the, of the intraplerical pressure and the, is, uh, it, it sure has the effort of the baby. And this is the tidal volume. You can see that this asynchronous breath uh, perhaps is uh, auto trigger and perhaps a backup rate, uh, there is not at the same time the effort of the baby. And you can see that from uh, the ventilatory point of view, this breath is practically ineffective. This problem was uh, demonstrated many years also, many years later, also by uh, Peter Davis. He studied the effect of non synchronized nasal ventilation and he reported that the tidal volume only increases. In a significant way when synchronization occurs. And also, Peter Dave reported that, uh, that the synchronization occurs only about in 25% of cycles, confirming the previous paper that uh, the rate of asynchrony is extremely high. So, the hypothetical beneficial effects due to the non invasive, uh, not synchronized nasal ventilation are above all due to uh, an improvement in, uh, uh, in manner pressure, and this means an improvement in FRC. 
you know that improving an FRC it determines a lot of uh, positive effect on respiratory physiology, lower compliance, lower resist, um, improve the compliance, uh, decrease the resistance, improve the perfusion of the lung, and so on. Another uh, effect could be that the intermittent inflation of the hypopharynx could stimulate the respiratory drive. And moreover, we can think that super added ventilatory inflation enhances tidal ventilation. But I underline, as we have seen in the previous paper, only the synchronous breath has really um, improved. Moreover, the um, asynchronous mechanical breath have also some uh, negative effect. First of all, I think this is a phenomenon that we see very frequently an alteration of the spontaneous respiratory rhythm. You can see here that the ventilator start at the beginning of the respiratory phase. We have a blow up here of this image. The ventilator start exactly in this point. You can see that the baby react with a very prolonged and deep expiration. Why? Why? Because um, the, 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 probably the lung was uh, overinflated. And this, uh, what we see here, is only an Eric Breuer inflation reflex. Mm -hmm. And not only there is a deep expiration that uh, is not a good phenomenon, but there is also, also a delay at, uh, at following the expiration. The same thing was uh, demonstrated in, in, in um, other papers. Uh, I, I show you this uh, paper by Professor Bancalari. Again, the, exactly the same phenomenon. This is the esophageal pressure. The ventilator starts during the expiration. You can see here a prolonged exhalation and here a forced expiration, a positive, a positive pressure inside the esophagus. There are some, uh, <coughs> some others, a negative effect of asynchronous breath. There are several papers demonstrating that the asynchrony may also activate laryngeal closure. And it could be the, the, the results because the flow goes in the, in the wrong way. There could be an increase in abdominal distension. And all these factors increase clearly the work of breathing. And above all, I think the discomfort of the patient. I want to underline this last point that is very rarely considered. Uh, we know perfectly, there are many, many papers demonstrating this, that in infants, children, and adults, asynchronous during non-invasive ventilation is an important cause of stress and discomfort. And it is a, free, a frequent reason of uh, NAV failure. And uh, we know perfectly that in preterm infants, pain and, uh, and stress have well-documented adverse neurological impacts as a, an alteration of the development of brain and cerebellum. So a question that um, I ask myself very often, but I have not the answer, is asynchronous nasal ventilation a possible cause of stress in premature infants? As I said before, thousand and thousand uh, um, asynchronous breath every day I think that uh, could be really a cause of stress and we should study this problem. But as I said before, I have no answer to this question. But now let's go on to analyze the interaction of synchronized nasal ventilation with spontaneous breathing. Synchronous mechanical breaths have, uh, uh, we will say, have many positive effects on respiratory physiology. This is uh, the recordings of a baby in access control uh, with a flow synchronized ventilation. You can see that the rate of, uh, here we have a long respiratory time, here short, so the rate is the rate of the baby. And uh, you can see that three lines, pressure, flow, and thoracic impedance now are perfectly aligned. The ventilator starts every time the baby starts breathing. So, but why does synchronization has positive effect? The reasons are very simple. Because when the ventilator is, is, is triggered, when the pressure uh, start rises, at that time the glottis is open. Moreover, uh, the pressure of the ventilator pushes the, the soft pellet again the base of the lung, sealing the oral cavity. This means less leak. Moreover, the upper airway, as uh, we have seen before, are stiffening and widening. Moreover, there is a real collaboration between the baby and the ventilator because 
uh, as you can see here, there is the negative pressure due to the contraction of the diaphragm, the positive pressure of the ventilator. This means uh, an increase of the transpulmonary pressure. This, list, this means less work of breathing. Clearly, the, 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 the time lag between the start of spontaneous breath and the mechanical breath must be very short. By convention, we say less than 100 milliseconds. Another very important point is that also the torque of abdominal asynchrony is reduced. Now, I'm going to show you this problem that is uh, very important in non-invasive ventilation. This is a, a, a very old paper, but still relevant. Uh, all this data were demonstrated, has been demonstrated in the following years. But this is the, the previous one, the first paper on this topic, the, on the torque of abdominal motion. Tinsiman, the author, placed two strain gauges, one uh, the, uh, around the chest wall and, uh, and one around the abdomen. In a perfect situation, the, the two structures should move in complete uh, synchrony. When the abdomen expands, uh, the ventilator, the, the rib cage also should expand. But we know that this doesn't happen uh, in, in a very low birth rate infants, but also in also in infants, that we have a paradoxical, uh, paradoxical breath, uh, especially when the compliance is low. And when the diaphragm contracts, there is an inward collapse of rib cage. So in order to maintain the same tidal volume, the shift, uh, the diaphragm had to increase to the shift to improve uh, the, the work of breathing to compensate the loss of volume. But how can a synchrony be measured? Can, a, can be measured in a very singular way, but the phase angle, that is the difference in degrees between two waves that move at the same frequency. For example, this is the, 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 the abdomen, and this is the um, rib cage. As you can see here, by convention, I have to say, one wave is 180 degrees. So in this case, the phase angle is 80 degrees. Clearly, when we have a complete synchrony, the phase angle is zero. When we have a complete asynchrony, the phase angle is 180. And Kinsey must study the phase angle in newborn treatment in different conditions. I have to say that the, 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 the right phase angle, the physiological phase angle in a, in a, in a healthy preterm infant is about 40 degrees because the diaphragmatic contraction slightly precedes glottal abduction. So 40 degrees is the, is, is the, is the best, is the goal. Uh, as you can see, if you if Tinsiman uh, studied the phase angle and DB treated with uh, CPAP and the tracheal tube, so this is a, a remarkable increase of the resistance in the worst condition, something that we have never to do. The phase angle is very high, not far from complete asynchrony. Better with nasal CPAP, uh, there is uh, with, nasal, with short nasal prongs, 80 in any case is the double of the normal phase angle, but the phase angle come back to normal value with the synchronized nasal ventilation. So the conclusion is that the synchronized nasal ventilation stabilizes the chest and reduces the thoracal abdominal symptom. So the physiological advantages of synchronized nasal ventilation as uh, the lowering of resistance, uh, the uh, in, in increase in transpulmonary pressure, decrease of thoracal abdominal asynchronous, and uh, as we will see in the following slide, this means an improved in ventilation, improved the work, a decrease of work of breathing, and uh, as we will see also perhaps a uh, uh, stimulation of the respiratory gland. All these things, I, I, I convinced that it means an increase in comfort for the baby. So coming back to the clinical results, analyzing the, 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 the improvement on ventilation with the synchronized ventilation, I show you again a very old paper, but uh, as I said before, still also this paper is still relevant because this data were all demonstrated in the following years. This is a crossover and the trial analyzing the physiological effect of synchronized ventilation compared to nasal CPAP after extubation. And uh, we studied the 11 very low birth rate infants. So this is the pressure in the circuit. This is esophageal pressure, as I said before, the effort of the baby, and here the tidal volume. Shifting from nasal CPAP so, so to synchronize nasal ventilation, there is a significant lowering of the respiratory rate. The, the, the effort is significantly reduced, one third less. 
And despite the reduction of the respiratory rate, despite the reduction of the effort, of the effort there is a significant increase of tidal volume and also the PCO2 was statistically lower. The same results uh, were obtained many, many years later by the group of uh, Helmut Rambler. This is, uh, he compared directly synchronized nasal ventilation with not synchronized ventilation. I think this is the only paper doing this, uh, this result, comparing directly the two techniques. And the beautiful thing of this paper that the two techniques were applied with the same manner pressure because 40 breaths were set of uh, not synchronized ventilation and only 40 breaths were assisted during synchronized ventilation. The baby were baby with a very low gestational age, uh, most of them still in oxygen, uh, it means uh, still in acute phase of the disease. And as you can see, the results were exactly the results we had in the, in the, in the that I showed you in the previous paper significant reduction of the effort or in other words of the esophageal pressure, reduction of the respiratory rate, the improvement in ventilation. So improvement in CO2 removal and an increase, a significant increase in, in uh, oxygenation. And uh, I want to show you also this, uh, this paper of some years ago. This is a crossover randomized cryo to compare the efficacy of flow synchronized ventilation with an NACP and CPAP in, uh, for the treatment in apnea of prematurity in, in infant in good condition but affected by severe episodes. And so the results were that uh, with, uh, only with flow synchronized, uh, with, with uh, synchronization, was possible to have a significant reduction of uh, the incidence of this phenomenon, apnea, desaturation, and bradycardia. And, uh, but uh, there were no differences uh, between NAPP and nasal CPAP. With uh, synchronized nasal ventilation, it was possible to reduce in a significant way all this phenomenon. And uh, I want to show this uh, last uh, clinical paper by uh, Manuel Luna just to, to show you the, the efficacy of this, uh, of this technique. Um, he was using in this, uh, this research, in this trial, uh, flow synchronized ventilation. And uh, he studied an, a number of baby um, as elective group. So baby after exhibition, elective group, and 92 of this uh, patient with a very low gestation aid, in 92 of percent of this baby, the, the um, extubation succeeded, so was a success. And this is also very important. A large number of baby was failing CPAP failure again with a low gestational age. They applied for synchronized ventilation as a respiratory therapy, and two thirds of these patients avoided intubation. I think that these are very encouraging data. So, what uh, choice about parameters, interface, and trigger for synchronized ventilation? The parameters, uh, I think, is a very simple answer because more or less uh, are the same parameters that you use during mechanical ventilation, just uh, the peak respiratory pressure is a little bit uh, higher, two, four centimeters. But as you can see, the value of, of PIP, inspiratory time, and flow, more or less, are the same that you, you, we use during uh, invasive ventilation. Clearly, don't forget carefully. About the interface, this is a very, very important point. It's a, a critical point because the interface affects pressure transmission to the line. You, there are different devices, different shapes. This means different resistances. And uh, I underline that the currently a widely adopted interface for NASA ventilation is the double inspiratory loop cannula. This is the uh, both tubes. In this cannula, both tubes conduct conduct inspiratory flow. This has the same shape as uh, the um, uh, for high flow nasal cannula. But uh, I, I know that this is loved by everyone, is loved by the, 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 the infants because less, due to the less nasal injuries, uh, loved by the nurses, easy to set up. It favors um, mother-child bonding, so it's loved by the parents, but uh, this uh, device, uh, it has very often a very high resistance, uh, which could compromise the pressure delivery to the highway. This is something that we have to think about. About the trigger, so the, the, the oldest one, I think, pressure sensor, pressure trigger, but uh, you know that, uh, especially in very low infants, uh, the, 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 the weak, uh, the, the, the spiritual effort is very weak. So with this device, it's very difficult to try 
to, 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 to find the, the, the good sensitivity. And so this means that very easily you can have um, auto-triggering or no triggering. Grasby Caps also is a very good device, but uh, uh, sincerely it's not very reliable over time because uh, the position, the right to, right to find the right position, uh, the, um, the movement, the movements, uh, also the abdominal distension are all factors that can, uh, can alter, alter the, 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 the function of this device. Moreover, there are some data in this paper that tell us uh, that during fasted breathing, the response of this device of this, of this device is less consistent. This is exactly the opposite that you want. So very good uh, tool, NAVA. The electrical activity of the diaphragm is uh, detected by this uh, catheter. In any case, this is partially invasive because we, have, we need uh, this uh, catheter in place for all the time of the treatment. Uh, this is also very expensive. So there are some paper, uh, very recent paper, that underline that uh, for a perfect functioning of this device, uh, it's needed a, a, a very good neural feedback. Uh, and very often the infant, uh, premature infant, the sick infant, uh, the, 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 the neural feedback is not so good. Our group uh, has de de developed a flow sensor that this is something that we use currently in invasive ventilation, but uh, with uh, non-invasive ventilation, there is a big problem of the leaks. But now I, I'm going to show, to show you how it's setting. This is a baby treated with a slow synchronized nasal ventilation. Here, the flow sensor, the response time is very good, about 65 milliseconds, all this data, this data are published. And uh, we adopted a double loop inspiratory nasal, a double inspiratory loop cannula, so the same as a flow nasal cannula, but we developed a, a, a cannula of very low resistance with the diameter of this tube is very high. So the, we could measure that, uh, we could check that the, there was a really good pressure transmission of, of the lungs, to the lungs. And uh, I remind you that in this case, the, the nasal prongs may must fit well because the peak inspiratory pressure and, uh, and the inspiratory pressure is controlled by the ventilator. But uh, I want to spend just a few seconds analyzing uh, this, uh, this image. A again, you have uh, the pressure of ventilation, the flow of thoracic impedance, but look at the flow. And uh, mm, well, this is a, a very good thing to have the signal of the flow. You can see that the flow is a very strange the shape of the flow because there is the inspiratory phase, but not the expiratory phase. What does it mean? It means that the expiratory flow leaves the airways from the mouth. So it means, it means that these two lungs too, there is no dot space and no rebreathing because practically never the expiratory flow comes back in the circuit. But this is also obvious because here there is a pressure and the, the mouth the pressure is zero. So the, the, the suggestion, if you, should, if you use this technique, don't close, the, never close the mouth of the baby, thinking that the, so the pressure is transmitted well, in a better way to the lungs. Moreover, I underline the fact that uh, the, the flow sensor detected the inspiratory flow, but never the expiratory flow. If you use a normal flow sensor, you will see that the few breaths, the, the, flow, the, the alarm will beep. You can see here that uh, the flow signal is uh, extremely stable despite the leaks. So we were able to obtain this by a special software that practically report to the zero line, the flow line after, uh, after every inspiration. So we resolved, I think, in a very good way, the problem of uh, the leaks, variable leaks. So the take home messages uh, of my lecture that asynchrony during uh, non-invasive ventilation may has may have some negative effects on ventilation, uh, the alteration of the rhythm, this is very frequent. And uh, probably also the patient comfort and, uh, uh, and also on the quality of sleep, but uh, we have no data about this. this uh, I, 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 I again underlined that this is something that should be started. By contrast, the synchronization integrates with the complex physiology of the upper waist, reducing walk of breathing and improving ventilation and comfort. Uh, synchronized nasal ventilation is a technique very well studied, and uh, there are uh, 
Many papers demonstrated that uh, it's better than an EPTV and Nasalcipap, also than the BiPAP, in reducing the need for intubation as primary support in RDS, in improving the success rate of extubation, and in reducing the incidence of apnea desaturation in bradycardias, as I showed you before. So uh, I conclude that, um, underline that uh, flow synchronized nasal ventilation performed with a low resistant double loop respiratory canal can be used successfully. And so the good thing is that we were able to combine the physiological advantages of synchronization with the same comfort and, uh, and easy use of, the, uh, of this interface, of the double, double respiratory loop canal. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Moretti. You made us uh, to understand what is the anatomy involved, what is the physiology behind the synchronized NIPPV, also the clinical imp implications that we usually <clears throat> uh, we require what we require in uh, pre term that they should not get mechanical ventilation and the rate of BPD should be come. There should not be any. Uh, more work of breathing, which led them to mechanical uh, ventilation and uh, intubation. So, uh, synchronized and IPPB is one of the best mode. We started from CPAP, non invasive ventilation, now synchronized non invasive positive pressure ventilation is the norm to prevent uh, mechanical in, uh, ventilation. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Any question from audience? Okay. Yes, I want to, to, I want to underline that no one today will use uh, not synchronized ventilation in the invasive mechanical ventilation. I think that we are going uh, exactly toward the same goal. That uh, I think that in the future, every child, every newborn will be ventilated with synchronized nasal ventilation because uh, the path is exactly the same as what happened many, many years ago. But who would uh, treat uh, with not synchronized ventilation intubated today? No one. Everybody should, should, would say that there's a crazy thing. I think I know that with uh, non invasive ventilation, there, there is a less direct barotrauma, but uh, more or less the problem are exactly the same. We have to consider this. Okay, so any question from the audience? Uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, regarding my question, is like uh, uh, this uh, how uh, I uh, concerning regarding uh, CO2 level, sir. If it is synchronized NIV, there is a chance of any hypocarbia and uh, any neurodevelopmental issues. And one more question is, uh, uh, kindly share your experience regarding the volume compensation, uh, uh, how much uh, leak compensation is happening, and uh, how uh, your ventilators are compensating, with how much percentage of uh, leak compensation is happening. No, so the first, the hypocarbia, I, I heard well. The first question. Are, uh, about uh, uh, CO2 uh, was out. His, his concern is that if we keep synchronize an IPPB, then there will be more CO2 was out. So, no, th th there is any problem about CO2 removal uh, because uh, so it's the baby who determines his own uh, respiratory rate. And uh, uh, so we, we never had problems. So we had uh, a, an improvement in removal of CO2, but uh, always at uh, physiologic levels. And uh, about the, the leak compensation, uh, uh, you know, when we, we use that, uh, we, we, in, in our device, it's not, so, it's not needed because, uh, uh, because uh, yes, there are the leaks, but uh, when you set the flow, uh, of eight to ten liters, so the the minute the the flow is much higher than needed. So there are variable leaks, but uh, uh, usually the the pressure that we set that is in the range of fifteen twenty five is uh, is is reached. I am I, I don't know if the leak compensation is so useful because uh, it means that to increase abruptly the the flow. Uh, and so this uh, also have uh, bad effects. So this is, uh, in our device, uh, is not a problem. Uh, currently, we like better to, to have a constant flow. Um, and it can happen that sometimes uh, a, a one or a few hacks uh, have a, a, a little bit uh, lower pressure, but this is not so important at the end. 
thank you professor anyone any any question hello it's a very good talk i my question is regarding the interface on a dragger we can use a cpap interface to give cpap through the ventilator for what sort of interface is it the same interface you use for sippv uh, uh, sorry for uh, synchronized non invasive ventilation uh, what sort of thing, uh, interface are available or can we use the same cpap interface So, so the, the, interf the interface uh, that we use uh, uh, is uh, also this nasal prong. I have not experience with a nasal mask. This is something that uh, we are going to try, but uh, um, most of all our trials were done with uh, normal short by nasal prongs. So, uh, in the last period, we developed the, 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 the double loop, uh, double spiratory loop cannula. And um, we, thanks to the, the, the fact that we can see the flow, we saw that there was never a breathing. So the two long tubes uh, were um, not a problem for a breathing at that space because the expiratory flow was, uh, as I said before, leaves always the, the, the iris from the mouth. So there is not a breathing. So now we are, uh, we are, we are using more and more this, uh, this cannula because as you know, uh, the, the, the parents and nurses, uh, everyone is uh, much happy with uh, this, uh, this more comfortable uh, and easy to, 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 to set uh, prongs. This is something rather new. Um, and I uh, underline that uh, the, the, we develop a special flow cannula, um, special cannula for this uh, uh, with very large resistance, so two large tubes, but in any case comfortable. That's Good afternoon, two. sir. Mm -hmm. One more question. Yes, sir. One uh, more question is th coming. Thank you very much for the excellent uh, talk. I just want to know whether um, this is one step ahead of CPAP. So, is there any uh, head-on? Uh, because the indications uh, after CPAP failure for mechanical ventilation is same. So, the mechanical ventilation compared to synchronized non-invasive intermittent positive pressure ventilation. Is it a head-on of any uh, trials which is, you have done, sir? Sorry, for you, because the, I have an echo, and so I didn't understand well, sincerely. If you try to speak a little bit slower, or if the chairman can tell me your question. Sir, uh, indication for mechanical ventilation after a CPAP failure is the same. So uh, yes. we just, yes, sir. So that we just go ahead with synchronized non invasive intermittent positive pressure ventilation. And uh, is there a trials? which compare synchronized non-invasive intermittent positive pressure ventilation with outcomes of um, intermittent mandatory uh, ventilation, which is, we all know it is non, uh, it's an invasive one, but there are little tri tiny premies where they have little bit of flow only or uh, uh, the volume, which may not be um, uh, the impedance, thoracic impedance or the flow, they may not produce adequate enough to uh, get the trigger of uh, through no, uh, synchronized non invasive positive pressure ventilation. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, I, I didn't understand. It's basically, uh, there, was, there is an echo that uh, amplifies everything. I don't know why. Basically, our question is after CPAP failure, is there any comparison between uh, synchronized and IPPB and invasive mechanical ventilation about the outcome? So, so, no, 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 uh, 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 yeah, and so, the, the, um, I, I showed you that before the, the paper of Luna that uh, it was, was possible uh, to, to avoid to 60% of uh, his patient, uh, the mechanical, the invasive mechanical ventilation is shifting from nasal CPAP, the, the baby was failing, and, uh, um, and uh, he, he, he used the synchronized ventilation as rescue therapy. And uh, in two thirds of these babies, uh, mechanical ventilation could, could be avoided. And there are data uh, from uh, the meta-analysis of, of IRA. And also there are two meta-analysis, previous meta-analysis, uh, uh, two Cochrane's. Uh, all of them reported that uh, the, there is really the hope that uh, that the BPD, uh, the, the rate of BPD decreases with this technique. 
But uh, I, I think this is um, normal because uh, this, uh, this ventilation respects the physiology of the baby. And, uh, and, and these things doesn't happen with not synchronized. Uh, the, what I said before, who would uh, who use not synchronized uh, invasive ventilation today? No one. But so the, the problem is exactly the same. Sir, is there a, um, um, a trial where you had compared flow sensor uh, versus thoracic impedance, which we are using head on um, uh, trials for uh, synchronized non invasive positive pressure ventilation? Sorry. Flow sensor versus thoracic impedance. We use the flow sensor, but I, I, what you asked me, it's, oh, sorry, I'm really sorry. Okay. Thank uh, you. Can you the, the, the chairman, can you, I, 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 I listen better to the chairman, not from your, um, the chairman, if you, if you could uh, repeat my, the question. Sir, um, thoracic impedance, you are using a synchronized non as positive pressure ventilation. Uh, you had showed two, two of the, your studies where you had used flow sensor yes. and uh, thoracic impedance, uh, the other one. So, um, is there any trials which shows any difference between flow sensor versus thoracic impedance? <laughs> the, 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 is, uh, yes, 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 understood, understood. Uh, no, we, we never did the, the comparison. Uh, we know that uh, the thoracic impedance, uh, you know that the Grasby capsules is many, many years that is on the market, but uh, um, it, it's well known that it's not very reliable. It's good for research, but uh, because you can stay, but you have to stay close to this device because uh, uh, in, uh, if you use for a long time, that could be a problem uh, and uh, it's not very reliable. So this is the, the, the reason why. Otherwise, it's so simple device that everyone, all the ventilators should, could have this device currently. But uh, why all the, all, we, we try to, to find another solution with flow sensor and uh, there is the NAVA. Uh, so there are... Uh, uh, attempts to, to, to increase the efficacy of the devices because uh, the Grasby capsule uh, is good, but not so good. And volume guarantee with the uh, synchronized non-invasive uh, positive pressure ventilation, volume guarantee added on with your synchronized one, like HF, HFOV we are doing with nasal HFOV with uh, volume guarantee, so something like that. Is there a trials? The problem in the non-invasive ventilation is that uh, we never know the, the, the volume. It's because uh, the, the expiratory low volume, uh, there are leaks, uh, from especially during the expiratory phase, leaks from the mouth. As you know, that the tidal volume is measured uh, during the expiratory phase. So it's, uh, currently, it's impossible to know the tidal volume. Now, uh, I don't know, in the future, now there are new tools to, to see the, the expansion of the lungs by electrical tomography or something like that. Perhaps uh, one day will be possible to know, uh, to know the volume also during an invasive ventilation. But currently we, we don't have this chance. But uh, so um, we have seen uh, that uh, in any case, due to the leaks, the direct barotrauma is less. In any, in any case, there is, there is the possible of, of, of for an overflow to leaks to, to leave the arrows from the mouth. And so uh, we, we never reported the, um, an higher incidence uh, of um, higher leaks uh, with this technique. This was underlined in, in many papers. Also, if we don't know the, exactly the, the expiratory tidal volume, you see, I think uh, it's a very difficult challenge for, uh, for the future. And that I, I suppose that will be resolved by electrical tomography or something like that. But uh, in any case, uh, if you use uh, the, the parameters in the range from 10, 15 to 25 centimeters of water, then we never had uh, problems with our leaks. Thank you so much, sir. Oh, sorry for my... <laughs> Difficult. Sorry, it's, the last uh, it's the microphone, I think, your microphone. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Professor Moretti. It was a very nice experience hearing from you about an I synchronized NIPPB, which is your passion itself. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Morati and Professor Pradeep Dibhan.